Here are my hiking boots. If you look, the uh, leather uppers look to be in pretty good shape. And of course the soles show somewhere, but they're still in pretty good shape. But this is happening. As you can see, the sole and the midsole has started to separate. You can see it here on this boot. It's a little bit more um, extreme than on the other boot. Turns out that this is a rather common issue with hiking boots. And so let's explore this issue a bit more and also look at ways that we can resolve this issue. First, we'll explain the problem that is causing this issue with the hiking boots. Then we'll talk about some considerations for repairing the hiking boots and then review the final outcome. The problem is that the midsole of the hiking boots is made out of polyurethane, and polyurethane tends to be susceptible to a process called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is the chemical breakdown of a compound due to a reaction with water. And again, in this situation, the chemical compound is polyurethane. So one should ask, why would they use polyurethane and not some other material for the midsole? Polyurethane is used because it is considered to be one of the best materials for boot performance. It tends to provide great support for the hiking boot and also meets the requirements for impact absorption. In the hiking boot industry, hydrolysis is a well-known issue with polyurethane midsole boots. Many manufacturers warn that within six to seven years of the manufacture of their boots, you could experience an issue with hydrolysis of the polyurethane midsole. This is often caused by exposure to water, such as hiking in damp conditions, but also exposure to human air. This problem is exacerbated by lack of use. They seem to indicate that if you used your boots more often, then you would prolong the life of the boots and delay the onset of hydrolysis. This issue tends to be more noticeable for hiking boots. One, because hiking boots tend to have a longer lifespan than traditional footwear, and also hiking boots tend to be more expensive. Because I found it interesting, I did a little more research into hydrolysis, and I found this article entitled Pathways for Degradation of Plastic Polymers Floating in the Marine Environment. They had a section on polyurethane, and polyurethane is a polymer. A polymer is a very long molecule with repeating subunits. And for polyurethane, this is the repeating subunit. And when polyurethane is exposed to water, most commonly this portion of the subunit degrades and this bond breaks and now you're left with the subunit broken in half. So you can see how a very long polymer chain is now broken into smaller and smaller pieces. And this is how, from micro perspective, how polyurethane breaks down when exposed to water over time. So we know what the problem is. The question now is how do we fix it? So looking on a solo's website, those shoes that I have are a solo's. If we go to their frequently asked questions section of their website, they have a section here. If we look at product storage and duration, they talk about how polyurethane midsoles uh, deteriorate and what you can do about it. If your shoes reach the point that mine have, the solution is to resole those boots. A solo recommends these four cobblers in the United States to resole your boots. I sent messages to all of them. I got replies back from three of them. And then after a web search to look for ratings, I decided to go with Dave Page Cobbler out in Seattle, Washington. To get my boots resold, I simply filled out this work request form and shipped the boots to Dave Page's facility in Seattle, Washington. 12 days after I shipped out the boots, they came back to me in a box like this. which also included a bottle of Nick Wax. I paid a little bit extra for them to apply Nick Wax to the boot. Here's what they look like with the new sole applied. It's a new Vibram sole, rather aggressive tread. So far, I'm pretty happy with the results. I've had the boots for a week now and I'm quite happy with the result. By getting the boots resold, I get a boot where the uppers, you know, the leather uppers have been worn in to mold with my feet, but I also get a new sole and that issue with the, the midsole deteriorating because of hydrolysis has been resolved. Of course, it is important to ask whether or not it is worth it to repair the boots compared to purchasing a new set of boots. And to answer this question, I'm gonna look at the financial aspects of repairing the boots versus buying new, and also the environmental impact of having boots repaired versus buying a new pair of boots. In understanding the benefits of repairing a pair of hiking boots as opposed to purchasing new, I think it's important to understand the environmental impact of a pair of hiking boots. 
I found this study, which is a life cycle assessment of a pair of hiking boots. These are not exactly my hiking boots, but I think they're very similar. And I think we can draw relevant conclusions from the results of this study. Of the many environmental impacts, let's take a look at greenhouse gas emissions. In this study, they found that 50% of the greenhouse gas emissions associated with a pair of hiking boots come from the shoe materials, things such as polymer fabrics, finished leathers, metals, rubbers, things like that. 27% of the environmental impact associated with a pair of hiking boots comes from distribution, so transportation from the manufacturing site ultimately to a retailer and then to the end user. And then 12.6% of the greenhouse gas emissions come from the shoebox itself. So by having my boots repaired as opposed to purchasing new, I was able to avoid emissions associated with the production of leather. I think I came out about the same when it comes to rubber because I did purchase a new sole to have attached to my boots. I was able to avoid emissions associated with the manufacture of fabric. Because I sent my boots in their original shoe box but got them back in another box, I'll say that I came out about equal when it comes to the packaging. And because I had to ship the boots to Seattle, I live on the East Coast, and then they were shipped back, I think I came out about equal when we consider emissions associated with the distribution of hiking boots. So overall, I was able to avoid significant emissions by repairing my boots. I, I think if you were to investigate further, you would see that emissions associated with leather production are very, very high. In fact, most likely higher than emissions associated with any other part of a hiking boot. To estimate the cost benefit of repairing boots as opposed to purchasing new, I first had to find the equivalent of my boots. My boots are a little bit older, but in 2022, the equivalent boot is an Asolo Powermatic 200. And so looking on the web, I found only one website that sold the boots in my size, and that was backcountry.com, and they were selling the boots for $375 new. The cost to repair the boots were as follows. I paid $29 to ship the boots out to Dave Page in Seattle. He charged $100 for the repair itself and then $15 for return shipping for a total cost of $144. So compared to spending $375 for new boots, if I'm able to get good usage out of the repaired boots, then I would say that I saved just over $200 repairing my boots as opposed to buying them new. Thank you for watching my video. Hopefully I've given you some information to help you determine whether or not repairing boots is the right choice for you. I will end with some manufacturer guidelines regarding how to extend the life of your hiking boots. First, they say avoid contact with water and store your boots in a dry place. Remember, humidity is a big driver of hydrolysis. Also, avoid heat. Again, store them in a cool, dry place. And clean your boots. So remove mud and also find a way to dry your boots. Again, thank you very much for watching my video. Please ask any questions in the comments.